Hello everybody. Isn't it funny? If you take a length of threaded bar, a big bolt, or a small bolt, they all have one thing in common. And that is, if you shorten them with your hacksaw, the thread never seems to want to work properly again. Well, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take an in-depth look at a cut thread. We're going to see what's happened to the thread to see why it's got clogged and find the best way to clear that thread. We'll also try a technique where we can cut through a piece of threaded bar without producing a burr and without messing up the thread. Hmm, we've got lots to do so we best get on with it. I've just cut this piece of M10 threaded bar with my axle. The blade was sharp and I took my time trying to obtain the cleanest cut that I could. Now, what I'm about to show you will happen to most sizes of screws and bolts that have been cut with an axle, be it junior or full size. Let's consider we're going to make a cut with an axle just here. Our cut will be at 90 degrees to the side of the threaded bar. If we look at the thread, you can see that it's at an angle to the cut. What this means is the thread thickness to the cut will vary from a full tooth to nothing. Let me show you what I mean. This end has been cut with a hacksaw. The thread is looking quite clean, there's a full tooth just here, and it thins down to half a tooth up here. Let's rotate this threaded bar a little. Now the half thread is down here, and it becomes thinner as you follow it up. Rotate the bar a little bit more. Now look at that. As the cut was being made, the thread was becoming thinner and thinner. It reached the point where it was so thin as the blade cut through it, the last piece of the thread bent away from the axle blade and was pushed into the bottom of the previous thread. Let's rotate the bar a little more. This image, I think, makes it clear. I'd cut through the threaded bar with a nice sharp axle and taken my time. I say this to show even if you make a good clean cut through a thread, the chances are this burr is going to be formed. The burr is filling this thread. It runs from the crest of the first thread, just here, to the crest of the second thread, just there. It lays across the root between the threads and will prevent this threaded bar screwing into a nut or a threaded hole. It's the formation of this burr that causes us most of the threading problems after we've cut a screw or a bolt. I can hear people yelling at the screen. They're telling me I should have screwed a nut onto that bar first and then once the cut was made and the burr formed you could undo the nut which would clear the thread. Well yes we can do that. In fact I do that most of the time when I'm cutting bolts but you have to be aware of a secondary possible problem. Let me explain. I hadn't thought ahead so our threaded bar didn't have a nut on it. I screwed one on at the other end and then spent about half a day winding it down to this end. Right, let's undo the nut over the burr, see what happens. I can feel resistance as the nut meets the burr and starts to push it out of the way. I thread the nut off the bar and this is what it looks like. The burr has been pushed out of the way and the thread is clear once again. As I turn the nut back onto the thread it's a little tight but it screws in with no problem. The thread seems repaired, but, and there's always a but, let's take a closer look at the end of our threaded bar. Here you can see the cutting lines of the hacksaw, and the burr is just there. Let's look side on to the bar with the burr there at the top. Rotate the bar a little. The burr is now there and starting to show that secondary problem I spoke about earlier. The burr has gone from clogging the threads to becoming an extremely sharp cutting tool. That cutting tool is just in the right position to cut into the thumb and fingers of the person screwing the nut on with their hands. If the burr is not removed, that sharp edge will sit there forevermore, able to cut or gouge anyone or anything that rubs up against it. Before I show you what I think is the best way to remove the burr from the cut bolt, let's take a closer look at how the burr was formed in the first place. The burr is there at the lower edge of the bar where it was formed by the action of the saw blade. Imagine the blade cutting through the bar in this direction. As the teeth reach this point, support for what will become the burr is being cut away by the blade. Two things now happen. The first is the burr. 
is only connected to the bar at this point. The weight of the piece being cut off and the weight from the blade is all pushing down. This causes the burr to start to bend about its connection point. The second thing happens as the burr bends down about 90 degrees. The weight of the axle blade falls onto the side of the piece being cut off. That piece is pulled off the burr and falls to the ground. That action has pushed the burr around its connection point just here and twisted it into the root of the thread, which is now blocked by the burr. Right, now we know how the burr is formed, how do we remove it? The answer to this is carefully. You must think about it. In this image you see the burr is just here. The thread is clear as another has been taken off and then replaced. My tool of choice is a file when it comes to deburring threads. The first thing you must do is identify the burr's position on the edge of the bolt and then file over the burr to the centre of the bolt in this direction. If you file in the wrong direction, the burr will bend back and block the thread again. Right, let's get rid of this burr. I can see the burr on this edge, so I'm putting the burr closest to me and I'm going to clamp the studding into the vise. Now I can clamp straight onto the, the thread because I have soft jaws in here. These are aluminium brackets that I use as, as soft jaws. And now then, what I want to do is take my file, file towards the burr so it knocks off the edge. Just like that. So now the burr has gone. I can just tidy up around the edge and take the, the sharp edges away. Like this. Now you notice that I've taken the, the nut off. And the proof of the pudding is now in the eating. No sharp bits. Haven't cut my finger. And does the nut go on? Foo! <laughs> it does, so I don't have to film that part again. Ta-da! Now we've looked in depth at how that axle going through the studding produces a burr and then that burr gets bent around and clogs the thread. I think we can get a bit tricky here. Now what I've done is put the uh, the studding in the vise. I've put a nut on at this end and I'm using the nut as a stop. Now here I have a flat, uh, a very thin flat file and it has filed edges here and I'm filing up against the, the nut which enables me to file down on the top of just one thread. Now I'm being a bit tricky here, I'm not sure if it's going to work but hopefully we may be able to cut this piece of bar without causing a burr. Let me bring you closer and I'll show you what I'm doing. Just here is a flat area I've made with the side of the file. Now, what am I up to? Let's look at the M10 studding. When I started our original cut, I did what most people do and laid the axle blade between two teeth of the thread. Let's say it was just here. Now, if we project the cut line down through the studding, because the thread sits at an angle, the cut doesn't emerge between two threads, it arrives on top of a single thread. And that's the thread which became our burr, that twisted round and blocked our thread. Well, what I'm wondering is this. If we start our cut on top of a single thread, say just here, if we project the cut line down, the blade will emerge in between two threads and not on top of one as it did before. Being between the threads means there's nothing to produce a burr, is there? Well, the only way to find out is give it a go. The end fell on the floor. Just had a thought. I have a nut here. If there's a burr, the nut won't go on. If we've managed to cut through this without a burr, the nut will go on.
What do you know? Look at that! We may have found a way of cutting through M10 studding and not producing a burr. It's looking quite neat. We need to just dress with a far, but before I do that, let's take a couple of close ups so you can have a look and see what we've produced. The cut started here on top of that single thread. It progressed down and emerged between the two threads at the bottom. The cut is clean and there's no burrs to clog the thread. This is the end of the bar. Our cut started here on top of that single thread. The hacksaw blade left cutting marks down here to the small ridge where the blade finished the cut between the two threads and the end of the bar fell off onto the floor. Well, we've looked in some detail about cutting threaded bars. We now understand why the threads get blocked and the best way to clean them of burrs. We've even come up with a no burrs technique for cutting M10 studding. <laughs> Could you do something like this? Of course you can. And with that, this video is at an end. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Could you do something like this? Of course you can.